It goes without saying that slamming cabinet doors can be loud. And these little pads really don't do much in the way to help. A few weeks ago, I came across a product called Blue Motion for doors. They're like tiny shock absorbers. You mount this cylinder on the side of a cabinet and it dampens the impact of the cabinet door. Unlike those rubber pads, this is really effective. Before you ask, this isn't a sponsored video. I paid for these out of my own pocket, but I really like the product and I wanted to share. So if you're watching, I hope you get some value out of it. When it comes to mounting the dampers, there are a few options. One is with the use of a mounting plate. These are available in single and double configuration. You would screw the hardware onto the sides of a cabinet, then insert the dampers into the preformed holes. My personal preference is to mount the damper directly on the cabinet frame. I feel that makes for a cleaner look. I drill a hole into the side of a cabinet and insert the dampers in that hole. I'll use the mounting plate if a situation doesn't allow me to drill into the cabinet, but in this case, the space is clear. To get these holes in precise location, I make a quick drill guide to aid with the process. My guide comprises a block of wood with a hole through it, which is attached to a base plate. The plate will register off a cabinet edge and guide the drilling. This cabinet side is 5 eighths of an inch thick, so I set the hole in half that distance, 5 sixteenths from the face. At the drill press, I've got a 10 mm bit to match the diameter of the damper. It's also worth checking that the drill bit is long enough to go through the guide material and still make a deep enough hole for the damper. I picked this bit of plywood from my scrap bin to be just the right size. The hole is drilled all the way through. Now I'll take the bit off my drill press and get it on my handheld drill. As there's no reinforcement on this hole, the guide will inevitably wear and become wobbly over time. If you need something more substantial, the company that makes the dampers also sells a drill guide with all the bells and whistles. I'll link it in the description. For what I'm doing, this homemade guide is fine. At this point, I was going to fasten this to a base plate, although I ultimately decided to hold the parts together with clamps so I can reuse this piece at a later time. Here I go for the installation. I didn't build in a great way to line up my guide, so I'll measure and manually lay out the position. As I said, this is secured with clamps. Okay, that worked pretty well. Just gotta clear out any chips that might be left inside. And it's done. Smooth and silent.
It's actually really interesting how these dampers work, in that the more force that's applied, the more resistance they exert in opposition. From what I can gather observing the product flyer, there's an air chamber inside here, and the piston sides actually expand proportional to the force applied on it, which in turn restricts airflow. I think that's really neat. And the result speaks for itself. I'm going to finish up the other cabinet off camera, but before I go, I want to tell you about a new podcast I've started called Maker's Viewpoint with Dylan Strawn and Justin Levine. We're up to episode four now, so if you're into that kind of talk, Q&A, behind the scenes stuff, I'll leave a link in the description. You can go have a listen. High five for watching!